Lots of games are including cooperative play these days as an added option, but how many can you think of that have been built entirely around the concept? Army of Two is definitely breaking new ground in this regard. It's a risky design that practically requires two human players to participate to understand its intricacies. But is it folly or foil? Hit me, bro! <laughs> this is combat. You can die in combat. Rios and Salem are two military lifers, but living off government checks isn't nearly as lucrative as becoming guns for hire, taking down some of the world's most dangerous inhabitants. Look who it is! Julie American! Thus begins a semi-connected jaunt around the globe, with the pair following the money with considerable firepower. It's about as typical and forgetful as plots in video games get. Yet the constant banter between the two draws on pop culture references and camaraderie, helping the modern day player connect with them in ways they never could with a grizzled spec ops captain. Damn cowboys better win tonight. Big game, huh? I got 10 G's on the spread. You are out of your mind. If you're looking for your next single-player, third-person shooter fix, Army of Two is really not it. There is a campaign that you can play through solo, but it only serves to reinforce how much better the game is when played with a friend. And there are several ways to do that. You can go split-screen and play locally, or head into Xbox Live and go at it remotely. Either way, this is where you'll realize how the game really works. Whether you're playing by yourself or with friends, the campaign doesn't last long. Enough. One solid day of playing will easily polish it off. This is where the two-on-two -two multiplayer modes come into play. There are just four different maps and three game types, though telling one from the other isn't all that easy. Whether you're playing Assassination, Extraction, or War Zones, you're given objectives that you have to complete, like rescuing injured innocents or taking out specific targets. Completing each objective awards you with cash, and the team with the biggest bankroll wins. In addition to all the cooperative elements making the crossover, there are also neutral soldiers to contend with the ability to buy new weapons mid-match, and vehicles to commandeer. The tool set is undeniably capable, but more content would certainly be welcome. The entertainment per dollar for Army of Two is completely dependent on how much you enjoy playing with friends. As a solo game, it's short and repetitive. When played with a buddy, it's limited length and relatively lean multiplayer suite doesn't bite quite as hard. <laughs> At first glance, it's easy to peg Army of Two as another Gears of War clone with a cover system and instant kills. That's only half true, and to describe it that way would be selling its ambitions short. There really is no cover system per se. Characters can crouch, but they never become magnetically attached to walls. This won't stop you from blind firing, but it does prevent those awkward moments where you're feverishly trying to avoid incoming fire, but end up glued to a vertical surface. The buddy system is what makes it unique, and beyond the expected hoists to reach higher areas, you can give your partners orders to attack, hold down the position, or regroup using the D-pad. Move it, Tice, go! Okay, Elliot. Beyond that, you can also set his disposition to be aggressive or stealthy. The commands work almost too well. Send out an AI-controlled teammate on an aggressive push forward and he'll clean house, leaving you to pick up the scraps. It's all governed by the agrometer a pendulum that swings from one character to the other, depending on which player in the team is lying on the trigger. Squeeze off an entire magazine and you'll be glowing red. You're like Rudolph the fucking red-nosed reindeer. Causing the enemy to focus their attention on you and allowing your teammate to sneak around for a flank attack. Using the meter wisely is the only way to get through the later levels, and it forces you to play the game the way it was designed. Everything sounds good in theory, but how does it all work in practice? This is where Army of Two falters a bit. The aiming is hard to get a handle on, and you may finish the game on the medium difficulty without ever mastering the art of hitting moving targets. Ultimately, it forces you to bum rush the enemy using your melee attack. The problem is that the computer has a hard time telling whether you want to shoot or crack skulls, leaving you vulnerable to up-close gunfire. Though there are a few vehicles in the game, none of them manage to control well. There are also no health packs. Instead, when you've taken one bullet too many, you're forced to lie on the ground and hope that your teammate can make it over to revive you. He can even drag you to safety before fixing you up. 
This works great when you're playing with another human, but relying on the computer to intelligently get to your position, assess whether he should drag you out of the line of fire, and then heal you after doing so is apparently a little too much to ask. Far more Roscoe P. Coltrane than Axel Foley, confusion commences, and many deaths are had. At least, there's a generous checkpoint system to keep the frustration at bay. You lost your fucking mind, bro? There's a nice attention to detail in some aspects of the game. You can rip the doors off cars and then use them as riot shields, and when surrounded, the pair will go back to back and everything goes into slow-mo. Weapons feature an impressive level of customization and give you something to do with your cash. You can also count on the stereotypical quick-time event here and there, but Army of Two really boils down to following the GPS's path while killing any soldiers that stand in your way. There are no peaks or valleys, it's just one steady slog. It's the different ways that you have available to get through the slog that gives it an edge. Yet another game built on the Unreal Engine 3, Army of Two has that distinctive look where everything metal looks great. The character models for Rios and Salem are the visual highlight, especially as you gear them up with custom items. The rest of the visuals could use a little work. The environments can look barren, the textures are bland, and the enemies are repetitive. Pre-rendered cinemas keep the paper-thin plot moving forward. The voice work is great, and the little quips the two soldiers share during breaks in the action are clever. Props, bro. You'll never know what you'll hear from them, and it does a lot to personalize characters in a genre where personality isn't normally a hallmark. Let's just stay out of each other's hair and get this thing done. No problem, fucko. Fucko? Who says that? Army of Two lives up to its name by being a tale of two different gameplay styles. Playing by yourself, it quickly turns into a grind of manipulating bad AI on both sides of the conflict. When played with a friend, online or off, its design begins to make sense, and upgrading weapons can become an unhealthy addiction. Either way, its truncated length is a deterrent to a full price purchase, and its head-to-head -head options are unique, yet limited. With this game, one is indeed the loneliest number.